All right, students, I wanted to demonstrate this, um, this stock lesson I've, I've uh, put in Schoology. And many of you have kept up with it, Mel. I don't know how many of you have kept up with the stock market. You probably heard that it went down quite a bit. And, and in class, we've said a few times that the stock market's going to go up and down. And we've talked about the economy. We know the economy goes in cycles and goes up and down. But this is a once-in-a-lifetime event that we've, we've gone through here over these last several weeks. We went from a, a period of just maybe three weeks to seeing the economy at an all-time high as far as employment goes to now where we are just a month later where the economy is extremely low, unemployment is at levels that we have not seen since the Great Depression. Now, I, my, my gut feeling is it's gonna be temporary. I feel like when things uh, get somewhat back to normal, more and more people will get back to work. A lot of people have laid people off, not because of a lack of demand, they've laid people off to avoid sickness and things like that. So this, again, will be something that you tell your children and your grandchildren about perhaps one day. Uh, but I will say this, and I feel very strongly about this, um, this would be a good time to invest in the stock market, uh, especially for you all because you're young. And we've said many times over that you have plenty of time. So when it comes to investing, and we're talking about investing something for the long haul, that's where we want to get to towards retirement. So we've got a couple of lessons. One's going to be what I'm about to show you now that tells you how to calculate uh, how much money you either made or lost on the stock. And then another thing is going to deal with what we call the rule of 72. And I will, I will post that uh, separately from this with the rule of 72. But the rule of 72 is something that enables you to kind of figure out how long it will take your money to double at a specific rate of return. So as we're looking at this stuff, the math is really very simple. I'm gonna do just one problem with you, and then you're gonna do the rest of the worksheet um, and, and looking at the numbers. And, and then you can discern some things and pull some things from this. I would like to, I'd much rather do this in a classroom setting where I can talk to you and give you different illustrations. It, it's just not as convenient to do it in this matter. So you can see on the worksheet, if you had it pulled up, uh, I've put the first problem or started the first problem up here. I'm going to read it out loud and if you have your worksheet or you haven't pulled up, you can read along with me. But basically in number one, it says we're purchasing 723 shares of stock. You should know what a share of stock is by now if you've done the assignments leading up to this. But you bought 723 shares of stock in Nike and you paid $47.75 for that stock. So every share costs $47.75 in this illustration we're looking at. So you then are going to, the, your problem tells you, and one year later, you're ready to sell your 723 shares of stock, and you're getting a price of $62.25. So I've written this out here. You're going to purchase or buy 723 shares at $47.75. The math is very simple. If you want to see the total amount that you're spending, you simply take 723, multiply it times 47.75. When you do that, you're going to get $34,523.25. So $34,523.25. That's how much money you spend on the front end. But then you wait a year and you sell it. So when you sell it, you sell it and are getting $62.25 per share. So if you do the math there, you're going to get back $45,006.75. Now, to figure out if you made money or lost money should be very, very simple for you to do that. We know that you made money because the stock did what? It went up in price. It went from $47.75 to $62.25. Now, how much money did you make? A couple of ways you can figure that out, and that's really what it's asking you here. It says, one, did you earn a profit or lose money from the stock sale? Well, you already know that you earned a profit because you sold it for more than what you paid for it. So there's your profit. That's, a, that's the amount of gain that you had in there. And so we know the answer to that question, but then it asks you, did you, how much money did you make or lose? So we know we made money, so we can simply take $45,006.75 minus $34,523.25. Now, it's not asking us for these numbers here. 
I put that up there for illustrative purposes. It wanted to know how much money do we make total. So we can take the bottom and subtract the top from that. And if we do that, we're going to get a difference of 10,483.50. So that's our, that's our profit. We made $10,483.50 off that sale of stock. Now, with that being said, a quicker way to do this problem would be we know that we got 62.25 and we bought it for 47.75. So if we did this, 62.25 minus 47.75, the difference of those numbers is going to be $14.50. We take $14.50 is what we made per share. So for every one of those shares, we made $14.50. We had 723 shares. So we take that, multiply it times 723. And when we do that, we also get $10,483.50. So you can do it either one of those ways. Now, a couple things to note on this one, we made money. Stocks go up and down. In, in a, a situation we have here, we, we, we could have lost money if we'd sold it at $30 a share or $45 a share. So keep this in mind. You don't make money or lose money until you sell the stock. You pay the money up front to buy it. The value of it's gonna go up and down in the short term. We hope, the reason we're buying the stock is we wanna make money, so we hope that it goes up in value over the long term. Now go back to what I said in one of the earlier videos, and based on the number of views I got, I don't know how many of you watched it yet, but in one of the earlier videos, one of the issues with corporations that sell stock is that there's double taxation. Now, this is the deal. You may end up having to pay, even though this is not strictly double taxation, you're gonna to have to pay tax on this money that you've earned, and that's called a capital gains tax. Uh, and, and lots of people don't like that rule, uh, because it, you know, of, of the way that it's set up, uh, we don't like paying taxes generally. Now, the second problem deals with another issue, and I'm not going to illustrate that here on the board. It says this, during the year you own Nike stock, you earn a dividend of $1.25 per share. You also should have learned uh, through their previous instruction that corporations pay out dividends to a stockholder. So if you had... Uh, $1.25 per share, and you had 700 in, and uh, those uh, 20 shares that you had, and number two, it changes it to 720 shares for some reason. You take 720 times $1.25, and that gives you $900. So that's how much you did in dividends you would have made, and you also get paid on your tax, you pay taxes on the dividends, which is the profits of the corporation, and Corporations paying tax on that, on their profit, and, they're all, and you're paying the tax on the dividend, which is double taxation. So, the stock market's gonna go up or down. We, when you invest in individual stocks, there's more risk to that. And one of the things that you're gonna get through the video series, I hope that you paid attention to, I wish we could have done more in class with it, is that a safer way to invest in the market is through mutual funds. And mutual funds take money from different sources, different people contribute into the fund when they have a pool of money and then you're paying a company to, and paying somebody to oversee that money to buy stock and sell stock. And if they do a good job with that, that mutual fund is making money through dividends, that mutual fund's making money when somebody buys a stock at a low price and they sell it at a higher price. They, all that goes into that fund and it grows. And if you're in, in the mutual fund, you have a portion of that. You have shares of a mutual fund. And that's generally a safer way to invest because you're spreading the risk out amongst many times hundreds of different companies. Again, that's a whole nother lesson, uh, but that is the way that you're advised by most experts to save towards retirement in a mutual fund. Now, pay attention in your other lessons. It talks about how to save also through your workplace, through what is called a 401k or 403b plan. Both of them are primarily the same. It's money that your employer will take out of your paycheck before taxes are, 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 are taken out. Uh, 401k is for profit companies. 
a 403B plan is for nonprofits. Like I contribute to a 403B because I work for a school system, which is a government agency, which is nonprofit. So to make a long story short, that's one way that you can save with a tax benefit. And another way that I strongly advise you all to look at is with a Roth IRA. There's a lot of advantages to Roth IRAs, especially for young people, because it allows you to pull the money out for certain things. One of those things being able to buy your first home, you can pull money out of a Roth IRA without penalty. And the nice thing about a Roth IRA, whatever it grows to, that's not taxable. And that's, that's a good thing because you're putting in money that you've already paid tax on once and the growth is not taxed. So that makes it a very attractive option. And I recommend every single one of you all to start investing in mutual funds through a Roth IRA. And you can talk to several different financial advisors around about doing so. If you want more information, please email me. Um, I'm not in the business of recommending certain people, but there's a lot of good financial advisors all over, all over Carrollton and Carroll County. And talk to your parents about what they do and, and email me directly and I can give you some advice if you're really interested in do that. But every single one of you all, if you do smart things when you're young, you're going to reap the benefits of that when you're about 50 years old, fat and bald headed like I am. And I wish I'd done that more when I was your age. How many times have you all heard me say that? All right, if you have any questions about the problems, holler at me, email me, don't just ignore it. Thank you, class.